The final five-star rankings are in for us here at On3, and DJ Lagway is the number one quarterback in the class of 2024, obviously. Whoa, <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, the, oh, I'm about to start cursing, but y'all look at my students watching my stuff. Wait a minute. Oh, oh the, hey man, stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. I know for a fact, I just made a video where y'all just, I just covered a video where y'all said Julian Sayan was the number one quarterback in the 2024 class. And all the fans for Ohio State said I was a hater. And here we are a couple days later, and y'all saying DJ Lagway is the number one quarterback in the class? Like, come on, bro. This is why I keep telling y'all, man, these rankings and ratings don't mean nothing. They're all opinions. They're not fact. They change and they go up and down with the with everything, bro. This is crazy. <laughs> hey, man, y'all just told me, the people in my comments, y'all in my comments, y'all say, hey, man, you a hater. You were this or you were that. Keep that same energy, man. That's all I'm saying. See, I don't gaslight. I keeps it real. I keeps it 100 all the time. Keep that same energy. Let's get it. See the Florida commit. Florida signing. He's already in class in Gainesville. This is a big time get. Obviously, it was a big time get regardless of where he was ranked before. But this gives us a great opportunity for us to kind of unpack DJ Lagway's impact in Gainesville and what he means for the future of Florida. So we'll talk about it right now. First things first, make sure you subscribe to the On3 YouTube channel. Florida Gator fans. Over the course of the last month or so, I would say we've had a lot of y'all join the program. Make sure you're subscribed to be. Hey, I don't know what's going on at On3, but it's a really hard push to get Florida fans subscribed. Like, I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. It's like, listen, man, y'all just told me that Julian Sand a couple days ago was the number one quarterback in the 2024 cycle and that Ohio State just stole or whatever or whatever and i said he won because you know to me dylan riola and, and aaron nolan and i like DJ, i just watched dj lagway film in preparation for i just dropped that video to y'all go check it out in preparation for watching i'm about to cover a couple of dj lagway dylan riola uh videos so i wanted to you know do some homework i watched a lot of film on dylan riola uh aaron nolan you know, for those two mainly, you know, and, I, and I'm watching a little bit more film on DJ Lagway later, but had to get myself ready. But I know for a fact, y'all just told me that Julian Sayan was the number one quarterback in 2024. A couple days, a couple days, a couple days ago. That's all I'm saying. He subscribed, brother. So we appreciate y'all for that. Also, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram at JD Pakel. Let me know how you feel about DJ Lagway being named the number one quarterback in the class of 2024, or class of 2024, rather, for us here at On3. I'll say this too. Charles Power, Cody Belair, both those individuals oversee scouting and ranking for us here at On3. There is nobody watching more ball than those two. So That's cap. I watch more film than all these dudes. I watch more film than all y'all. That's cap. That's super cap. That's super duper duper cap. Y'all lying, bro. Don't nobody watch more film than me. So they as I'm actually on the ground, I'm actually, I'm actually on the ground helping these recruits get recruited. I, I, I am the voice of the unranked. Regardless of how y'all feel about my, my ranked commentary, nobody puts more work in for the unranked recruit than me. So them boys ain't watching no, them boys ain't watching nearly as much film as me. I don't care what nobody say. They think DJ Lagway is the best quarterback in the class 2024. I would have to agree with them. And you notice what he did right here. He deflected. He know for a fact, he just covered a story saying that Julian Sayan was the number one quarterback. So in order to protect him, so he's like, hey man, this is not, these are not my rankings. I'm just reporting the news. I'm just reporting what was given to me. So he, he covered himself. So I'm off your head, uh, JD. I'm off your head. I'm off your head, bro. But on three, I'm on your head. But y'all just told me Julian Sayan was the number one quarterback. If that's their opinion on things, I'm just saying that is a very good sign for the folks in Gainesville. And nah, bro, you deflect. And he had a wild senior season, did DJ Lackway. I mean, over 40. And this is my thing. And I'm going to stop cutting the video off. I'm going to run a little bit. But what happened between November, December, the end of November, whenever the season ended, and now for all these quarterback changes to happen? What happened? There's no new film, man. There's no new combine. There's no new nothing. So what happened between 
November, December, if you made the playoffs, maybe, and today, and January 30th, heading into signing day, the, the national signing day. What happened? Nothing. Nothing transpired between now and then that would cause all these different quarterback rankings. At least all my grading at blindsidepro.com is up to date. It's all based on game tape. And we're going we gonna to take that time and break your film down. But what happened between... <laughs> Cause y'all just told me Julian say it was number one. Five hundred yards, fifty-eight touchdowns, just six interceptions. This is ridiculous. Seventy-two percent of his passes were completed. Dude was the epitome of dialed in. Uh, also, almost had a, a thousand yards on the ground. He's got a great frame to him, right around six two and a half, six three ish, two hundred and thirty pounds. Tough to bring down. He does not move like he's two thirty. That is, that is a solid two thirty. He's carrying around when he runs that football. Palpable arm talent. He's a playmaker in the pocket. You see him extend plays and throw off of, you know, different platforms and throw out of different arm slots, kind of like the Patrick Mahomes thing. Oh, my God. Y'all don't y'all compare everybody to Patrick Mahomes. Oh, my God. And y'all said Dylan Riola, Patrick Mahomes. Y'all say Julian saying Patrick Mahomes. Now DJ Lagway is Patrick Mahomes. DJ Lagway is not Patrick Mahomes. He's closer to Anthony Richardson, closer to maybe a poor man's Cam Newton, not MVP Cam. But he he is not Patrick Mahomes, man. Now he does do a good job with his he, like he's a good player. But y'all stop telling these dudes they Patrick Mahomes, man. They're not. And I think he probably looked closer to he's somewhere between I gotta watch some more film on DJ Lag. I just spent like 30, 40 minutes just watching his tape. He's a combination of he doesn't have the elite athleticism of Anthony Richardson. He doesn't have the size of a Cam Newton at 6'5", 250. Um, but he he kind of runs a little bit in that power run style like Cam Newton. He throws well. He needs to be developed a little bit. You know, he's, his velocity is not always there, in my humble opinion. He, his, he throws a wobbly spiral, so that could affect with the rim, wind resistance and slow the ball down so it could make his ball look or move a little bit slower. But, hey, man, y'all stop calling, telling these dudes they Patrick Mahomes. DJ Lagway will only be the next, the great DJ Lagway for Florida or whoever else he transfers to if he, if he transfers. The bottom line is the dude is a baller. Dude is a baller, and he is already in Gainesville, and he's going to be the future of your program. I wholeheartedly believe that. But to take it a further step, when we got a chance to sit down with DJ Lagway in person at the On3 NIL Elite Series event in Nashville, this is a guy that you want as the face of your franchise. Like, I mean, when we spoke to him, I mean, firm handshake, speaks with authority, a guy who has a ton of confidence, kind of controls a room in some sense, someone that you gravitate towards is what DJ Lagway brings to the table from an intangible standpoint. And there is no position in sports that is more important to have that it factor than quarterback, especially at the collegiate level, where you got to have all 10 guys in that huddle alongside you buy into who you are. DJ Lagway, I believe, has the it factor. He has it in spades. So all that has to say, be very, very fired up about what you have in the top quarterback in 2024 that is currently in Gainesville and going to lead you forward into the future in Gainesville. Now, again, we're talking about him right now just because he was named the top quarterback in 2024. But when you look at his skill set, that was always going to be what it was when he took over the reins in, in, in Gainesville. Um, here's the more important thing for me. For DJ Lagway being your quarterback at Florida, whenever that time arises, as a play caller, you are calling plays in the mindset of, okay, what do we want to call here? As opposed to what can we call here? With his skill set, what he's able to bring running the football, what he's able to bring pushing the ball downfield with his arm talent, the way that he's able to spray the ball around the yard, like there's not a ton of limitations to his game. And there's obviously a lot that has to, you know, develop and translate. There's a lot of... See, contradiction. You can't say... Now, just about to stop him. You can't say there's not a lot of limitations to his game. Then you got to say it's a lot of developmental things. You can't say both. You cannot say both of those things in the same sentence. You can't. Y'all need to start... And it's not, it's not just an on and three thing. I, I wish people would stop propping up these recruits so much to thinking that they're like God tier. And, you know, y'all, it's okay. You're not perfect, man. 
you can be a really good football player. You can be a really great football player and go to the league, be a first round pick, top 10 pick, and still have flaws. It's okay. <laughs> we got to stop telling these kids that they are perfect and that there's nothing wrong. Because if there's nothing wrong with you, how can you get better? And you're not, you're not the best version of yourself coming in as a, as a true freshman. You're just not. So you can't say those two statements in the same. You can't say whatever he said and then he got all his development. You can't say that. I watched the tape a while for a long time. And he, he ain't got a whole lot of holes in this game, but there are question marks there. There are some question marks. Factors into this, but at the, at the core things like you just straight up can't teach, DJ Lagway has that. That's a big reason why he's our top quarterback in this class. Today. When y'all ready to prop up Oregon, that's going to be y'all number one quarterback. See, I, I, I see what y'all – when y'all ready, whenever whoever y'all targeting, whatever audience you targeting, that's going to be your – whatever that player is, number top quarterback, top offensive lineman, top whatever. It's just conveniently going to be the number one guy to pander to that fan base. That's crazy. <laughs> this is – y'all just told me Julian saying was the number one quarterback a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago. And so you look to the future, what can you expect from Florida's offense? I think it has every opportunity to be dynamic, meaning it doesn't have to be in this box that, that's somehow kept by what your quarterback is or isn't able to do. On second and three, you can call quarterback power because DJ Lagway is a great athlete, or you can call quick game and feel good about him going to the right place with the football and putting it on the money. 100% agree. 100% agree on that. 72% completion percentage this past season in high school. So the, the bottom line here is the excitement that he brings, the trajectory that he brings to your offense in the future in Gainesville, I think is enormous. And I think when you talk about Billy Napier going forward, there's a lot of folks that seem to have a strong opinion on his job security. And I'm not here to comment on that. But I would say DJ Lagway committed to Billy Napier. People commit to people. So there's a lot said about talent acquisition in college football and a lot made about Billy Napier and what he is or isn't doing. I'm just saying the top quarterback in 2024 gave his commitment to Billy Napier and is excited to play for Billy Napier. So all that's to say, man, Napier landed the top quarterback in America. We talked about DJ Lagos. <laughs> I can't take this serious, bro. How many times are going to change the number one quarterback slot? <laughs> oh, my God. Bro, what is going on? Feel set a little bit already, but... What he brings to that offense, to me, again, it just says there's gonna, not going to be a governor at quarterback keeping you from your ultimate success. Now, obviously, you got to have the right pieces around him from the line to the playmakers. The defense has to hold up there into the bargain. College football is the greatest team sport in the world. That's why we love it so much. But at quarterback, I think as long as it translates and develops the way that you would like it to offensively, you have your quarterback. And uh, I'm excited to watch him. Hey, what he just did right there was a qualifier. He said, as long as all these things go well, then he's the number one quarterback. It, either he's the number one guy or he not. You said Patrick Mahomes earlier. It don't matter what you put around Patrick Mahomes, he's going to get you in the playoffs. And four out of the five last years, he done got you to the Super Bowl. So, and that's with, with Tariq, without Tariq, with a terrible offensive line, with a great offensive line, with a terrible defense, with a great defense they had this year. With no running game, with a great running game this year. No matter what you put around Patrick Mahomes, he going to do Pat Mahomes things. So you can't, you won't have to do qualifiers for Patrick Mahomes. He going to do what he do. He Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes, bye. Come on, bro. I'm picking, hey, man. Hey, man, we putting everybody on notice, man. Screw that. We putting everybody on notice, man. Y'all y'all can't be out here saying crazy willy-nilly stuff, man. We, we, we putting people out here. Do great things in Gainesville here in the very near future. So, with that being said, we got more to talk about tomorrow. Live 11 a.m. Eastern on the hard count talking. Whoo, boy. <laughs> bro, these people will tell you anything, bro. And, that, and let, let, me tell, let me just be, to be fair, the ranking systems are not perfect. My ranking system is not perfect, but it's consistent. I'm not, I'm not flip flopping players just, just to do it, just to uh, garner attention from a fan base. I'm, I'm not, I won't do it. 
I'd rather be called the hater for being objective than be, you know, gas people up for, to be a panderer. I just refuse to do. I'd rather you call me a hater for being honest and objective and say, hey, man, let's get it. He's DJ Lagway is a really good quarterback. He needs to sit for two year, a year or two, maybe. He could come in and play as a first. He could, depending on the depth chart. But I think he would be better if he sat down for like a year, developed their arm talent a little bit more. You know, he probably need to lean that frame out a little bit. 6'2", 230, that's kind of thick for a quarterback. That's a little thick. I ain't going to lie, that's a little thick. At 6'2", you probably want to be 215 maybe. I don't know, but he he's not a runner like that. He he's a, he's a legit dual threat. But like I said, I'd rather be objective and honest, and be called the hater, than be just pandering the fan bases. I just I refuse to do it.